Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing great. So welcome to another episode of projects. So in today project we are going to implement a python script. And what exactly this python script is going to do? Let me explain you in detail. So this script will help us to use the github api and it will help us to manage our repositories efficiently. So Suppose, do you have a repository which are collecting dust? Means, are there repositories in your organizations which have never been opened or used from last 30 days? Still, you are using those repositories? No. Then in that case, let us clean up it. Because in an organization, such kind of repositories, generally we don't use, but we are paying a lot of money to the vendors. So, is it really needed? If not needed, let us clean up it. So, what this project is going to teach you guys? First, you will learn how to authenticate with GitHub API using a personal access token and the process of fetching your repositories and checking their last modified date and techniques to filter and display repositories that need attention. So, what exactly we are going to utilize in this code we will be utilizing the request library of python for api calls working with python's date time module to calculate the date differences and you will easily understand this complete code within 5 to 10 minutes so maybe let us begin first learning code line by line and then implementing this code and seeing how exactly it is going to work for you. So in Python, you will see whenever you will start your code, it will have a import keyword. So what is import keyword? Import is a keyword used to bring in external modules or packages into your script. What exactly this means? This means, suppose some already functionalities has been developed by somebody else that is packaged in form of module you are just going to use that module so you are importing a module that is request module and what this request module is going to do it will help us to handle http request and date time manipulation so we have two module one requests which will help us to interact to http and date time module will help us to do date time manipulations. Now first line is clear. One way is import request and the another way you can use like from date time, import date time and time delta. So if this module is very big module and it has some modules, then in that case you can start with the from keyword and here I am only from the date time, I am importing the date time and time delta. This way we can call. So either using import keyword or from keyword, you can import the modules. Now, you all know to interact to GitHub, you need to log in. So for login, you need to generate a personal access token for authentication with Git under the developer setting options and your GitHub username is required. So how you can get that token? First, let us understand. So this is our repository, DevOps Tech Stack. Now you will click on the right side this top and here you will see multiple options. So in this, just click on your profile. And here, if you see, it's giving information about the profile. Similar way, here we'll have another options like your organizations, your enterprise, so all, all these details, your repositories, your projects, your organizations and right side here if you see you have project discussions, explore. So click on the home button. Then go to settings somewhere we have to find where is settings here. So here is setting button and in the settings you will see developer related section will be there. So developer settings and in developer settings you have personal access token. So you can click on fine grain tokens or token classic. 
So here and then you can generate a new token if you want to generate a token. So once you click on this, it will tell you to authenticate and then generate your new token. I have already generated the token, so I am not generating here. But uh, understood, you understood the concept like how we can generate the token. So we have defined one variable here, GitHub token, and whatever the token you will get from there, just I am inputting it in a single quotes because it's a, a string. And then GitHub username, our username of GitHub is DevOps Tech Stack. How I can verify? You can verify in your profile sections. You will see the name is username is DevOps Tech Stack. Now GitHub API URL. So GitHub is exposing a URL which you can use. So the URL for using the GitHub API is https colon double slash api github.com slash users and then your github username here it will replace the actual username and slash repositories so this is the endpoint of github rest api now in context to interacting with github api or any other apis you have to set the headers which the token for authentication means including your security credential in HTTP request headers. So we are defining a variable here called headers and in these headers we are passing our authentication token and our actual token which we are using here github token. Now we understood in the header variable we are setting our authorization token and in the authorization token, actual GitHub token, we are putting into it. Now, once this is done, now we are defining two variables. One is 30 days ago. So what this variable will do, this variable will get the date and time now, means today's date, and last 30 time, means time delta 30 days before. So this variable will have, like today, if suppose today is, 2024, 10th month, and 28th. So, the 30 days ago will get some value like 2024-09-28. So, this variable now got 30 days before value. Now, if you want, you can print the 30 days ago value. We don't want it to print, so I am just commenting it. Now, we have defined a function. So def keyword is used to say it's a function. Get repo not modified in last 30 days. You can name this like last 30 days or get repos, anything. But just the relevant name I am putting here. And then we are, once function is defined, we put semicolon. And then we have a response variable. In response variable, we are telling that using the request module, use a get function. And in the get, you have to pass the GitHub API URL and as a header token. So if both of these values are correct, you will get a response status of 200. That means your connectivity to GitHub API was successful. So in that case, whatever the response values we will get after authentication, just we are putting in a repos variable is equal to response.json, whatever the data come as a response once your authentication is done. And one more variable we have defined that is inactive underscore repos. And this variable is empty. Now, this repo is containing all the response values. So, I am passing this response values in a repo variable. So, we are looping through all the content of repos variable one by one and we are defining one more variable here last modified so if you want to know what is last modified last modified is date time dot strip time repo push at what exactly this means in this repo variable what was the last time some push has happened to it what was that last time in this response you will get that value so and convert this into year month date and time hour minute that means 
this will get something. Suppose like some value was, some repo was modified in 2023, 110, 28. So this last modified got this value 2023. Now, if you want to print, you print. Otherwise, if you don't want to print, don't print. So I don't want to print. I am just commenting this variable. Now here, suppose it got last modified 2023, 10, 28. Now, if last modified, is less than 30 days ago. And what is the 30 days ago value? 30 days ago value is 9th month. So if last modified is less than 9th month, that means it's an inactive repo because it's older than one month. So inactive repo will appending this value. And since it's a for loop, it will keep running, keep running and uh, till the all the items are complete. And if inactive repo is true, means yes, this gets some value, then you will print repository not modified in last 30 days and you will print those inactive repos. Else you will tell that all repo have been modified in last 30 days. Else there is some problem in the status code and it will fail. And then just we are calling this function. So I hope now you understood this code let us do it practically. So I am clearing the screen and then I am running this code. So just save the code and run this Python code. Now here you got the list of all repo which has not been modified in last 30 days. In this you have projects like chefdoc, complete python, devops project, docker project, hello world. Let us see any of these repo. So you have Linux projects, Linux project also coming. So let us go inside this Linux projects. And you see this was modified last two day, two years ago. Now let us open any of this file. Like suppose I am opening this readme file. Linux project, just I am modifying here. Uh, modifying here is Linux project test and just I am committing the change. So now Linux projects should not come because the last modifies date of Linux project is changed. So if you see now, this is one readme file is modified right now. Now if I run the code, Linux project should not come. Let us see it practically again. So let us verify from beginning. Let us see if somewhere Linux project is there. No, no. Hello world, Jenkins, cell scripting, Terraform. So Linux project is gone. Let us re-verify it. One mo more is cell scripting. Let us go back here. Go to cell scripting and just open this any of the code. And I am doing nothing. Just I am adding echo empty line. So just edit this code. Go here. Just put echo welcome. That's it. Commit the changes and now again run the code. This time cell scripting should also not come. So if you run, let us see anywhere cell scripting is there, GitHub, charts, chef docs, cell scripting. So this means our code is working as expected. So on a high level, if I re-explain the code, we have used two modules, import, request module, date time module and time delta part of date time module. Then we have exported the GitHub token, GitHub username. Then we have passed the GitHub API URL. And then in the header, we have given the token, pass the token. And then in the uh, request.get, we are passing our headers and GitHub API URL. Then checking the response code, storing the response in a variable, and then going through each of the items of that, and then doing the comparison. So I hope this code is very simple code, but it's very powerful, which can help you to save a lot of money in organizations. So I hope you guys understood it well. Let us know in comment section if you face any problem while running the code or if you have any confusions. Whenever we'll be running this code in companies, of course, token we, we don't need to pass here. We can use the Jenkins pipeline and store the token as a safe method. Or manually, if you want to run, just export the token and then reset the token. 
that's it that can also be done so there are multiple ways to deal with this token accordingly you can handle this token but yeah in case of jenkins this token can be hidden and you can use it in your code so that's it about today's video guys thank you so much guys for giving your valuable time